What's going on everyone, Tugi here, back again, this time with my first edition of what I like to call Tugi's Take. Now simply put, this is going to be a way for me to discuss whatever I really feel like discussing, whether it's sports or a different topic, in long form. I can't guarantee every video is actually going to be in long form, meaning 10 minutes. Some videos might be shorter. This video might be shorter. Simply put, this video, as you can see by the title, is discussing the Liverpool-Manchester United game today as well as Liverpool in general through these first five games of the season. Quickly, I'll go over the goals. Um, the first half was pretty pretty damn boring. Just a real defensive mindset from Liverpool right out of the gate. And I will discuss the whole Brendan Rodgers and tactic things in a second. Anyway, second half, off a corner, Daily Blind is left completely unmarked. Again, that's part of the problem. Completely unmarked, but a beautiful finish by him. Put United up 1-0. Under Herrera in the 70th minute gets a penalty. It's 2-0. 82nd minute, Christian Benteke scores one of the greatest goals you are probably ever going to see. A pretty bad cross by Jordan I, broken up by Daly Blind. Fortunately, the ball went right to Benteke, who finishes with a magnificent overhead kick. However, and perfectly, just so fitting, two minutes later, Anthony Martial in his United debut, the controversial signing, undresses Martin Skirtle, has him in his back pocket the whole way, and just walks right in. Unstoppable shot against Mignolet once again. 3-1, and that would be the final. Now, the ironic thing here is in terms of stats, possession-wise, it was only 55% to United. United were actually outshot, four shots on target to three in favor of Liverpool. But... It never felt like at any point Liverpool were threatening to win this game. And really at this point, I'm finding it hard to not just blow a gasket over this team. Yes, they have decent results, but if you look at this season, you get a miracle win over Stoke off a miracle shot by Coutinho to help salvage what was really a terrible game and a terrible start where you were lucky to get those three points. You look at the second game of the season against Bournemouth. Benteke's goal should not have stood. Bournemouth's goal should have, you should have, lost or at least drawn. Again, lucky to get three points. Third game of the season, Arsenal. Aaron Ramsey's goal called off. It should not have been, you should have lost that game. Again, lucky to get a point. And now the past two games, we've seen this team show you know, what they are at this state. A 3-0 destruction by West Ham at Anfield, and now this 3-1 loss to United. You can look at just about any player on this roster and criticize them fairly. Some more than others. Uh, Lovren, for example. Firmino, for example. However, th this has been a long time coming. And it started when Brendan Rodgers won manager of the year in the season where we finished second. Of course, that summer they sell Luis Suarez. The team has that massive turnover. We falter. Another big turnover this offseason. A lot of new talent. And truly, I believe this team is good enough to compete for top four. Can they get top four? Will they get top four? Probably not. But do they have the talent? to do so. I truly believe they do. Now really, when talking about the season, the only team that is firing on all cylinders is City. United is struggling. Chelsea is struggling. Arsenal isn't doing tremendously. They're doing all right. Spurs are struggling. There's just, if you had just a little bit of confidence, you would be right up there. Now, of course, I don't want to overreact. It's only five games into the season, but this has been the, you know, you can't have last season go the way it did, end the way it did by getting crushed by Stoke, and then have this season start the same way. Really what this all comes down to is Brendan Rodgers. Now, I respect Brendan Rodgers. I, at some points, have thought he should go, but this prior off season, it kind of said, in like, okay, you know, now it's, it's make or break. You know, this upcoming season, give him one more chance, see what he can do. And so far, he has shown complete incompetence. He just, tactically, you know, defending, overly defending. I mean, just, you know, I'm not even going to edit this. Three goals. You have three goals in five games. Are you kidding me? 
<laughs> you know, the miracle goal from Coutinho, the goal by Benteke that shouldn't have stood, and then another miracle goal by Benteke today. W- just how? How with this team can you be struggling this much? You know, yeah, sure, Daniel Sturridge is still hurt. Sure, Firmino is still trying to get settled in, and obviously whenever he has the ball, it's kind of nerve-wracking because you can tell he's not playing with confidence. Coutinho was obviously suspended for the United game. He hasn't had the best start to the season, but still use him properly, allow him to do what he does, and if he actually, at that point, when you put him in a position to succeed, if he falters, hey, it's Coutinho's fault, not Brendan Rodgers, but that's not what's happening. You you just got Christian Benteke for, what, $30 million? I can't even remember the number right now, and I'm too damn lazy to look it up. $30 million plus for Benteke, and you barely give him any service whatsoever. Rarely does he get the ball. And when he does, it's not like he has too many options if he's being properly covered. This was a team that had the fewest amount of crosses last season. And you get one of the premier target men in the BPL. And you don't change your style to better suit Benteke and to properly use him and to put him in a position where he can actually be effective. Like I said, you can pretty much criticize anybody on this team and be, you know, and rightfully so. Mignolet hasn't, you know, he's been solid, but he had, you know, he's had some shaky moments. Lucas, for the most part, I feel like has been a rock back there. But, you know, you could fairly criticize him again. Adam Lallana has had a god-awful start to the season. Alberto Moreno's barely been used, and I don't really know why. Sacco, for God's sakes, just, okay, hold on, let, let. When talking about the defense, I think Joe Gomez has done all right. He's done all right. He's done about as well as you could expect someone his age to do in this situation. A center back playing at left back on a new team, one of the most historic teams in the world. Obviously, though, that prestige isn't quite where it should be or used to be. I still think, though, I that this team would do a little bit better if you had maybe Jose Enrique or Alberto Moreno at left back permanently. If you like to play Moreno as more of a midfield, go ahead and do that. Put Enrique in there. He's here. Joe Gomez should be playing center back. However, there are, you know, there's at least one person who deserves to play center back a little bit more, and that's Sacco. And for the love of God, Skirtle's walking a thin line. Lovren's over it. Yeah, he had a decent game against United. He wasn't absolutely horrendous, but I just, I, I still don't know. Th- this defense is in shambles. It's in part due to the tactics, and it's in part due to the actual players not actually performing. Now, I, I'm already at the point where I feel like I'm rambling, but it's just so frustrating to look at the roster. Is it the greatest roster? No, but you can look at this first team squad and see the potential in it. And I feel at this point, nothing good is going to happen if Brendan Rodgers is here. Changes need to be made, period. I'm not going to sit here and say, bring in Jurgen Klopp. I'm not going to sit here and name potential replacements. But it's obvious, Brendan Rodgers' system, for one reason or another, does not work, at least at this point. He has not shown a willingness to really adapt. You went to Old Trafford and decided, for the most part, you were going to just park the bus and try and grind it out that way. I, I, I don't understand this. This is a team, with all due respect, that's been playing daily blend at center back, and you're going to park the bus rather than press. This was a team that could not beat a 10-man Newcastle. And you're going to park the bus and not really press. I won't claim to know the most about football. I don't. I don't claim to know better than Brendan Rodgers tactically. I don't. But you can see, just the proof is what you see on TV. It's not good, and it's potentially going to get worse. Their next game is September 20th against Norwich. If that result does not go their way, I would hope at the very least 
there are more rumblings of Rodgers potentially being gone. And again, this is from somebody who wanted him to stay, who wanted him to get a second chance, but you're already off on the complete wrong foot. Your offense is almost non-existent. Nobody seems to be playing with confidence or really even enjoying themselves other than a hand, you know, a handful of guys may not have the best players in the world, but a team with Christian Benteke, with Coutinho, with Firmino, Daniel Sturridge, once he's healthy, this should be a team that is able to put up goals and to be a competent offensive squad. And I don't blame the players. I blame the manager and how he's setting things up. And that's just that's just how it is. Put it this way. We have Danny Ings. We just, you know, Liverpool just acquired Danny Ings from Burnley. 11 goals last season for a relegated side. Started against United, and I thought he did really well. And then you have the tactics come in, and it was almost like he was playing left back for half the game. I don't... I just... Again, this is a team that clearly lacks an identity. When you can see guys, really, to me, it was Chan, Klein, Danny Ings that were really seemingly excited to be there and excited to play. And tactically, there is just, there's nothing. It's stale, it's stagnant, it's just nothing. Flat out, terrible, terrible football. But we're supposed to be optimistic. We're supposed to be optimistic that this team is going to turn it around. And I just, I don't see a reason for that optimism to be there at this point. As I mentioned, the next game is against Norwich. I hope and pray Sacco is in the lineup. Skirtles deserved a little bit of leeway take Lovren out, get Skirtle in there for the love of God, go to a different formation. I I don't care what it is. Just make it more attacking. I don't care if you put Ibe and Ings out on the wing. I don't care what you do. You just, you need to do something. Half the problem with the defense is just the constant pressure, constant turnovers from the midfield who do nothing but just, you know, predictable, short passing no long balls up the field, nothing. It's just such a stale, boring game every time you watch them this season. I've seen it said that any other top club would have sacked Rodgers, and I've also seen other people say, yeah, well, unfortunately, LFC aren't a top club, and it's painfully true. Spending near $300 million and the team is still struggling, I don't understand how you can defend Brendan Rodgers or this management group. Changes have to be made. Any other team, I don't care if it's Watford, I don't care if it's QPR, any other team would have sacked Brendan Rodgers at the moment. And he is, I believe, the second longest serving manager, which is freaking insane. All right, guys, you've heard a depressed Liverpool fan ramble on for long enough. I will be back with some more videos throughout the week and potentially another somewhat review giving my take on whatever and hopefully if it's next week and I do another you know and I give my opinion again on Liverpool it's in happier spirits with a more inspired and hard working team to actually be excited about and to not sit here and essentially have to ramble and on and on in just extreme disappointment this team can be better than this it should be better than this and I pray that it will be better than this. You know, down in the comments below what you think, not only of Liverpool's struggles this season, but of the Premier League in general. I want to know who you root for and how you think they're doing and how you think your team will finish. If you've enjoyed listening to me mentally break down, leave a like down below and I will catch you guys next time.